This video focuses on giving tutorial questions in support of the block diagram videos. In particular, we're looking at closed loop transfer functions. Now, we're going to assume that students have gone through the earlier videos in the series on block diagrams. And here, we want the students to practice. So it is important that after you've read the questions, you pause the video and then try the questions. Only continue with the video once you've made a good attempt at the questions so you know, can I do it or not? A reminder of some key information, a rule that we have gone through, but is quite important for this uh, particular set of tutorial questions. We're going to use this formula here, that the closed loop transfer function between a loop input and a signal somewhere in the loop is given by the forward path between the loop input and the signal you're interested in, divided by 1 plus the return path, where here return path is everything in the loop. First question then. For the loop below, find the transfer function relationship between the signal R, you'll see R is here, and the signal U, U is here. So you'll notice R is a loop input, U is uh, a signal in the loop. And also, having done that, where are the closed loop poles? Now is the time to pause because I'm going to go through the solution. OK, if we use our formula that GC equals forward path over 1 plus return path, then you'll see the forward path between R and U is just M, whereas the return path is GM, so you get 1 plus GM. So that's the sort of answer that you're looking for, that U equals m over 1 plus gm into r. Now, I can stick the numbers into this and see what I get. So gc is going to be s plus 1 over s, all divided by 1 plus 3, s plus 1 over s, s plus 2. And if I multiply everything up by the s, s plus 2, then I'm going to get s plus 1 times s plus 2, all divided by s, s plus 2, plus 3s plus 3, which gives me s plus 1, s plus 2, divided by s squared plus 5s plus 3. So there's the closed loop transfer function. Now, I'm not going to bother doing the closed loop poles, you'll see that the closed loop pole polynomial is given by this polynomial here, and that's a simple quadratic, so you will be able to find the roots by yourself quite easily. Second question. For the loop below, find the transfer function relationship between the signal R, that's marked here, and the signal Y, that's marked here. And again, um, what is the closed loop pole polynomial? But it's added an extra bit here, it's asked the question, are all the poles in the left half plane? Because that's an important thing to determine. So now's the time to pause, because I'm going to move to the solution. <coughs> OK, so remind ourselves, we've got R here and Y here. So that's the transfer function that we want between R and Y. So if I write down by inspection, I'm going to use this forward path over 1 plus return path. The forward path is GM. The return path is everything in the loop, so I get G, M, H. So there's my closed loop transfer function, G, M, over 1 plus G, M, H. I can now put the numbers in, so I get 0 0.5 times 2 times S plus 0 0.4 divided by S, S plus 1, so that's G, M, divided by 1 plus... 0.1 times 0.5 times 2 times s plus 10, s plus 0.4. I'm sorry, having to squeeze this in a bit. And then you've got s, s plus 1 squared. So it's quite a messy um, transfer function to have to write all down there. Now what I'm going to do is multiply top and bottom by... Um, s times s plus 1 squared. I think I've got that right. Did I miss... Uh, OK. 
So what do we get now? We're going to get that GC equals 0, 0.5 times 2, by the way, is 1, so I can uh, write that straight away. So I get S plus 0.4 times S plus 1 divided by S, S plus 1 squared plus 0 0.1 into S plus 10, S plus 0 0.4. So it's quite a long expression. Now, if I want to find the closed loop poles, I really need to expand this out and see what I've got in total. So I'll squeeze this in at the bottom. I'm just going to write the denominator. So I'm going to write PC equals, you'll see I've got S cubed. I've then got 2S from the left-hand term. And from the right-hand term, I've got 1.04S. So that's going to give me... Oh, sorry, we've got to do s squared first. So we've got plus 2.1 s squared. So you'll see I've got 1 s squared from the left-hand factor and 0.1 s squared from the next factor. If I now do the... So now I need to do the s terms. So on the s, s plus 1 squared, you'll see I get a single s from that. And from the 0.1 times s plus 10, s plus 0.4, you'll see I get a 1.04 s. So that's going to give me plus 2.04 s. And then finally, the constant, I'm just going to get 0.4. Now, we were asked, are the poles in the left half plane or not? Now, if you look at the videos which focus on roots and polynomials and establishing whether something's in, uh, whether the roots are all in the left half plane, you'll find that the criteria was to multiply together these two middle coefficients, 2.1 times 2.04, and check, is that greater than 0.4? And the answer is yes, and therefore all your poles are indeed in the left half plane. <laughs> Final question. For the loop below, find the transfer function relationship between the signal R and the signal Z. So there's R and there's Z. Again, it's asked questions about what's the closed loop pole polynomial, are all the poles in the left half plane, and where are the poles? But we'll give a warning here. You'll notice that the um, transfer functions are beginning to get quite complex in terms of high order, and therefore this is not going to be a paper and pen task because it's getting tedious and my advice is always once the number crunching gets tedious it's quicker just to turn on the computer and get the computer to do it and we will show you that shortly first then part one we were asked to find the transfer function between r and z so we can write down by inspection that the forward path is going to be km and the return path is going to be everything in the loop, so you get 1 plus m k g h t. Now, I'll write it out for you, but in general, you'll notice this is really beginning to get quite tedious. So km, you've got s plus 0.5 over s, and you'll notice k was a half, but there was 2 in m, so the half times the 2 cancels to give 1. And then we've got the same thing, s plus 0.5 over s, and we've got to multiply by g, which was 0.5 over s plus 2. We need to multiply by h, which was 0.1, and s plus 8 over s plus 0.8, and we need to multiply by t, which was 2 over s plus 5. And again, you'll see, as we said on the other slide, this is beginning to get very messy indeed. I can, of course, multiply top and bottom by this term, this term, this term, and this term. And if I do that, I'm going to get s plus 0.5 on the top times s plus 2 times s plus 0.8 times s plus 5. And underneath, you're going to get Again, a very long expression. I don't know if we're going to fit it in. You'll get s, s plus 2, s plus 0.8, s plus 5. And then you're going to get plus s plus 0.5. And then you're going to get s plus 8 
and a 0.1. Now I'm not going to expand all those out, it's a bit tedious. Um, the key thing is you can see the steps are straightforward. What next then? You said MATLAB. Can we use MATLAB to check our answers or to get the answers in the first place? Now the thing to remember is that the syntax on MATLAB is given here, but FP and RP mean different things to the rule you've used forward path over return path. When you use MATLAB, FP is still forward path. It's the blocks between the loop input and the signal. So that's the same. However, the next bit, the R, stands for remaining. What other blocks are there in the loop? So not um, the whole loop, but just what's left. So you need to be careful when you use MATLAB to get the syntax correct so you don't make silly mistakes. So I'll move to the MATLAB window now and demonstrate. So first example, you'll see we had G and M. So I'll enter those. There they go. G is 3 over S plus 2. M is S plus 1 over S. And you'll see the feedback statement that I use here is feedback M comma G. So the forward path was M and this, what's left in the loop is just G. So I go M comma G and you'll notice here comes the answer. If I want to find where the poles are, I can use this PZ map command. And there you'll see the poles are at minus 4.3, minus 0 0.69. For the second question, we had three transfer functions. So we'll enter those. So you'll see I had G, 0 0.5 over S plus 1, M, 2S plus 0.8 over S, and H has not displayed. I'd put a semicolon there. You are H is 0.1S plus 1 over S plus 1. Now here's the feedback statement. You'll notice the forward path, here it is, was M times G, and what was left in the loop was just H. So I put MG, comma H, and here you go. You can see the closed loop transfer function. Again, if I want the poles and zeros, I can use this PZ map function, and there's the poles, all in the left half plane, as we predicted when we used that Routh test. And the final example, and the point for doing this is to show the examples can get quite messy. Here we had five transfer functions, but it's very easy to enter them all into MATLAB. There they go, all entered. And now, if I want to get the closed loop transfer function, I just need to know how to use this feedback statement. So you'll see feedback, m times k, that was the forward path. What's left in the loop, g times h times t. And MATLAB will just throw out the answers in seconds, saving me the hassle of doing all these paper pen exercises. Again, if I actually want the poles, I can use this PZ map, and out they come. So in conclusion, we've given a tutorial sheet on simple block diagrams, given some work solutions, and demonstrated how you could use MATLAB to test your answers. And of course, in general, this means you can use some different transfer functions, set the uh, questions for yourself, try them on pen and paper, and then use MATLAB to see if you've got it right. And that way, you become independent.